You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 66 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Tim. Tim back once again. Last week we had Tim on and we're having him this week. So if you don't like it, listen to another podcast. (laughs) Don't tell him to do that. (laughs) Voice your concern, Maddie G (laughs) on on Facebook. What we're going to do, we're going to talk about some hockey movies today. Nick will get into that because it's episode 66, which is also my football number. It's Wayne Gretzky, right? Nope. Better. Wayne Gretzky was 99. Oh, the reverse Wayne Gretzky. Mario Lemieux. That's how you say it? Lemieux? Yeah. Like Pepe Lemieux? Pretty much, okay. yeah. Um, we got that. We might have some Game of the Weeks coming up. Brandon's got cool picks. And we'll see if anyone has a Jerk of the Week. So, quote time. Knock, knock. That's the quote. <laughs> I figure that. Am I supposed to say who's there? No. <laughs> that's, why I, <laughs> that's why I said that's the quote, so you wouldn't say who's there. That'd be awkward. <laughs> it sounds familiar, but I can't guess it. I don't know either. This is Pure Comedy Genius by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator. <laughs> <laughs> when he's in Vietnam... <laughs> And he busts open the militia's door with the, and he has his grenade launcher. <laughs> the guy looks at him and he says, knock, knock. <laughs> and he blasts the guy through the wall. <laughs> cool. I actually had a, a quote written down, too. What's that? By Arnold Schwarzenegger. You want to see if you can get it? Yeah. He said, Killian, here's your Sub-Zero, now Plane Zero. <laughs> Running man. <laughs> that quote comes up in my top five. Shit. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure hunting. Yes. How many items do you have? Two. What are you? One. Ah. Uh, so I can't steal it. You can't steal it, but it still rolls to next week. Here's the first one. Oh, NBA Live 98. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How much is that worth? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have your phone. Right oh, there. okay. I was getting ready for... Oh, it's for oh. sure? Okay. You want me to rule my second one? Yeah, let's see how much your stuff <laughs> you is. You really don't know what it is? I don't know. I can't remember. You you know it's at least four dollars though. Right? Oh yeah, it's it's more than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> College Football USA '97 for that, 90... that one is in demand. <laughs> <laughs> I only thought the '98 series. I like how it's like in the blockbuster pack too. Yeah. <laughs> you get you, you get in your tally. Oh, it's not complete. Oh, it's not. You should have had him check. I should have. At least he's got the box. Okay, so are you looking up your stuff? Yeah. So NBA Live 98, $6. And then College Football USA 97. Uh, we found out it's not complete. Loose, it's 3 Complete, it's 10 So I'm going to guess 5 or 6 Awesome. How is that not not complete? Because it doesn't have the book. It's in the box. Okay, it's in the box. You mean how is it? You you were asking why? Because they said not complete. I would not understand why that's not not complete. Oh, because it's supposed to have the instruction book. Yeah, complete is the box, book, and game. Making another appearance on Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Oh, Pokemon uh, 2, Stadium 2. That's awesome. Thirty dollars. Yeah, twenty nine fifty to be exact. Did you have to do the dimple switcheroo? I did. That's <laughs> <like the time. laughs> 
So let's get this punishment out of the way. I don't get punishment. Yes, you do. Why? Remember, if you don't steal from me, I don't get punishment. What? Remember? Since I didn't steal that, since... <laughs> since you didn't... I think of ways to get out. No. I, <laughs> no, because remember... Uh, I didn't have any... That was a pre-SummerSlam thing. No. No. <laughs> now he's trying to do the reverse, because when... Okay, then I get my prize then. Did I get a prize? I don't think I got a No. Pr- I didn't. Tim's here. We gotta do a punishment. <laughs> I, I mean, this is a ball trauma. <laughs> I want to hear ball trauma. I want to see live action ball trauma. You guys love to touch each other's nuts. So like, yeah, no. This whole podcast is based around you guys making excuses to touch each other's nuts. <laughs> Treasure hunting for brother nuts. <laughs> How about we let Tim pick the punishment? Who's getting punished, though? I don't think I should get punished for, for you not stealing treasure, for me not stealing your treasure. <laughs> if I pick, I pick the shuriken where one person is going to get messed up and some guy's asshole is going to get messed up. <laughs> Double punishment. <laughs> I think we should Nick, let Nick weigh in on this. <laughs> Why? I don't have anything to say. How about we roll a dice. If I lose, I get a punishment, but then you can't steal a treasure. And then if you win, then I just get a punishment on you. I want to keep that steal a treasure, though. Then take the punishment. No, because you got to get out of the punishment and steal my next treasure. You, <laughs> that one, you the last, the one when I brought those 20 games, <laughs> you, you stole the one... That was worth 40 bucks. Okay, we'll do a dice roll, and whoever loses, that's the punishment. All right. Out of 100. Oh, man. (laughs) The odds are in your favor. Who's this for? This is for me. 83. Ooh. All right, for me? You need 83 or higher to win. What? Silver rolls higher. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) 80. Oh, Do you want Tim to pick the punishment, or you want me to roll the dice twice? Uh, roll the dice twice, and I'll pick. Didn't I hear in a few shows ago, like, ripping someone his fucking fingernails off and Bamboo shit? Bamboo shoots. Bamboo yeah. shoots. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to get waterboarded. <laughs> Five. Nut tap. Six, steal random treasure. I'm picking nuts at. <laughs> I should get into the pose like you were the other time off. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pull it off. Now you gotta do a secondary nut tap on the forehead. Alright, so you got punished and still get to keep your still a treasure. (sighs) Game of the week. Game of the week. You guys got a game of the week? Uh, kinda. I've been playing through The Last of Us and I beat it last night. Did you really? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> you said you were playing it like five hours a day or something? Well, yeah. When you beat the game, it tells you how long you've played, and I played 20 hours. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so I, I think it says that I'm like 10 hours into it, and you said that you passed that like three days ago or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. But, um,. I thought I got all the items. I, I missed them. So once you beat the game, you can go back to the previous chapters and collect stuff you missed. So I'm going to have some more exploring to do. 
Like some more uh, dog tags or something? Yeah, dog tags, the documents that you find, um, skill books, stuff like that. But what what the cool thing is is once you pick once you beat the game, since I beat it on the hardest difficulty, I could go back and play it on easy if I wanted to to get all the collectibles. So I might do that. But great game, awesome story, I love it. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a sequel. If they could make a sequel, maybe like different stories, like Walking Dead, how there's different stories, but. I really like it. I like the infection, the uh, mushroom fungus that turns people crazy, uh, the different types of monsters. It's awesome. I don't want to say too much because Nick's still playing through it. Mm. I beat uh, Castlevania II Simon's Quest uh, earlier this week. The plan was uh, to do a video recording of it, but I got too into it. I, I didn't want to stop to, to wait for Brad to set it up for me. Um, so, I'm just going to do a little summary. The game follows Simon Belmont, who's on a mission to undo a curse placed on him by Dracula at the end of the, the original Castlevania game. In order to do so, Simon has to find uh, the five parts of Dracula, his rib, his heart, his eye, his nail, and his ring, uh, to resurrect Dracula and defeat him yet again. I didn't, excuse me for interrupting, but okay. I, I didn't know his ring was part of his body. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> ask. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was a few parts in the game that I had to consult GameFacts.com. Just, uh, I, yeah, call me a non-gamer if you want. I don't give a fuck. But the translations <laughs> were so fucking weird. You didn't know what game. to do in that game. There, it, it was like the, there was no hints. Like usually in like an RPG type game, you could talk to the townspeople or whatever, and they'll give yeah. you ideas as to what you're supposed to do. But not only did they not like really give you any direction, but even if you even if they did give direction, you wouldn't be able to understand them because it was all translated very poorly. Um, every time you got one of Dracula's parts, it would say that you possess Dracula's <laughs> rib <laughs> instead of possess Dracula's rib. That's just one, you know, major example because it did it five times throughout the game. <laughs> but it's a it's a fun game, and like all the, the Castlevania games, the music is really good. Uh, Bloody Tears plays whenever Simon's out in the forest in the daytime. Uh, the nighttime music's pretty good as well, but nothing beats Bloody Tears. Mm. That was so sick. So that's that's what I did this week. I played Castlevania too. I'm gonna try to get back into Last of Us next week. Yep. Uh, I played through Mega Man Two a little bit uh, on the video recorder. <laughs> oh, when's that going up? <laughs> it's not going up. <laughs> probably Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> I played through it. Got all the way to Wily Stage Two without dying. And I thought it was a good stopping point, so I stopped the recording. It was like 38 minutes in. I played back the recording, and you couldn't hear my voice at all. I don't know if the cat ran through to the recording and turned down the volume with her tail or what, but <laughs> I, noticed that the <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the microphone was turned all the way down. So uh, what happened was I set it up, turned it off, waited for my wife to go to Zumba class. When she left, I turned it on. Didn't I think I'd have to reset everything? Apparently you do. It's fucking bullshit. But uh, I'm going to play through it uh, hopefully tomorrow, and then we'll get Nick's uh, Castlevania Dracula fight on as well with his commentary uh, sometime next week if he still wants to do that. I might not do the Dracula fight just because it was so uneventful. Like when I I went through the whole game, and then of course you run into Dracula and this massive enemy. And he's dead in like five seconds. <laughs> Did you just throw a bunch of flames at him? You mean with the flame whip, you mean? No, like the flame. The, the sacred flame. I don't know. Oh. I just whipped his ass with my flame whip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just what, goes around in circles. Yeah, yeah, he has some projectiles, but they're pretty easy to dodge. I liked the uh, two mini bosses in there, the Grim Reaper and the Silva. What's her name? Camilla. Camilla. Yeah, the, the face. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the the boss battles were pretty easy. I mean, they're uh, you're right, they are cool, especially the Grim Reaper. But in terms of like like when you get done playing Mega Man, they don't really compare. No. You know, it'd have been cool instead of Dracula's ring if he had his fang <laughs> or his dick. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have passed censorship. <laughs> they probably would have called it like Dracula's worm or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So go ahead and keep liking us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're going to get some more game playthroughs on there with our expert commentary. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, go ahead and back and listen to episode 47, Mythical Beast and Soiled Shorts. That's up on YouTube. That's when Brad self-declares himself as a jerk of the week for using an article of clothing at the Goodwill in a really bad way. <laughs> <laughs> in a way that could give someone pink eye. <laughs> You, and the, you threw those away, right? The the soil shorts. No, no I I left them in the. Remember the worker said, "That's nasty." <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode fifty, part one and part two, the award show. I really like that episode a lot. Go back and listen to that episode fifty. We do a badass Godzilla review, and just go to subscribe to us. Our subscri subscriptions have grown twofold, so let's try to get up to threefold or fourfold. Yeah, Instagram, YouTube is awesome, and uh, Facebook and uh, iTunes Podomatic. I gave you guys a rating on iTunes I think last night. Oh, that's awesome. It was awesome. Was it a good rating? <laughs> <laughs> is that one star? I, I said you guys were one of my top ten favorite Sacramento-based video game podcasts. <laughs> we made the top ten? That's amazing. Uh, top ten. <laughs> In all of Sacramento. That's... <laughs> I had a game of week, fuckers. Do <laughs> You guys just brushed over me. I, like, I don't fucking play video games. <laughs> what do you have? Worms. Is it worms? No. Oh. Well, I played that guys with you guys, but... I have that on my list yeah. to go over. I play, I play the one game for since December. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I play Killer Instinct. I play it for 30 minutes a day. If I miss a day, I go back. And, you know, so I'm like six days behind, you know. I always play my 30 minutes. You, can't, you just can't compete with those people who play all day, every day, mm -hmm. you know. I've been playing for fucking... Almost a year now, and I'm like, I'm like good, like level 15 character, and it goes up to 40, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a it's a fun fighting game. It's really intricate compared to you know the fighting games back in the day. It's it's for Xbox One. If you guys know, it's the new Killer Instinct. It's it had some glitches when the Xbox when it first came out. It was pretty it was pretty glitchy, mm -hmm. but it's got almost everything worked out. It's coming out with season two here later this month where they're getting eight new characters. That's tight. And they come out with new stuff all the time. It's like, it's, what's cool about the new gaming systems is they constantly fix glitches, they, you know, make it more competitive, you know, or they're taking away some abilities from some characters, making this one quicker, making that one. Oh, okay. it, it changes up all the time. It's like, so it's pretty sweet. They try to make everything, you know, as competitive as possible. Who's your favorite character? Well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good with Glacius right now. He's a, like the ice character, Glacius, you know? yeah. Who was the, um, there's a fire, Cinder. Cinder, Cinder was a fire yeah, one. Yeah, he's supposedly coming out in the season two that's coming out. Oh, okay. Out. And then it happened, they had, that was one of the old characters. I hate Spinal the most. He's a skeleton. I suck mm. balls of them. I remember in the yeah. Super Nintendo version, he sucked too. Do you have like a, a memorial match or, or something like that? Oh, full fucking what I hate is the people like last night I was playing, and you have to go through two bars of life, and you'll have yeah. somebody, you're going to go through his first bar, he's got, you know, three quarters of a second bar, and you'll lose your first. So it's like you're two hits away from winning, and then he starts teabagging you in the middle of the fight. <laughs> like, like, while you're down for a second, late for the second round. Because that's one thing you do with this game, people, when you're down for, you know, for a second, they'll go over and squat on your face. Like, squat, 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 squat. <laughs> so, so you're, I, te I think it's teabagging, but my daughter watches, she's 11, she's like, oh man, they're pooping on your face. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they're pooping on my face. <laughs> Motherfucker should be like teabagging me. I'm like, you're one hit away from losing, you bitch. It's so, like some guy last night, he was teabagging me. I, I, I know him without say shit, you know, unless they're talking, you know, because on the Xbox, you don't wear a headset or anything, you just talk normal and they yeah. hear you. So when I fucking beat that guy, fucking two more hits later, I'm like, I'm teabagging your ass, motherfucker! Look at that! I don't know why I don't shame people, but fuck, that pisses me off. So you still end up winning and you still get teabagged? <laughs> well, no, it's like what I'm talking about when he took my first life away. Yeah. He only had like he only had like two hits left. It's like you're gonna lose this match. That's right. You shouldn't be bragging. <laughs> I had the honor of getting teabagged by Tim last week when we played. <laughs> <laughs> we both chose random, and he got full. No, Jago, and I got uh, or Orchid, Black Orchid. Yeah. Whooped my ass, and then he came over and started teabagging me. I was like, oh, that's cool. You could teabag on this game. <laughs> When Nick comes over, he'll watch, he's watching me play a couple times, and he'll just start yelling shit like he's me. <laughs> <laughs> he uses the N-word pretty liberally. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like how Holly 
to show y'all too. Like they're getting eaten by a girl. Oh, like, that's yeah. tight. Yeah. Like some guy down there just comes like, you fight like a bitch. You fight like a bitch. Always like laughing. You know, it's pretty good. <laughs> that's people will do that. They'll play like the grappling characters and they get all pissed off. You don't go toe to toe with them. It's oh, like, yeah. why would I do that? That's so stupid. You know, <laughs> they got like you're cheating because you're throwing fireballs out and <laughs> like went like yeah. Sanjeev against Ryu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and we also got to play Worms for the Xbox, which was heck of fun. Uh, my favorite part was looking at all the Worms' different names <laughs> that Tim named everyone. A few I can't mention because they're too vulgar. <laughs> and a certain uh, group will probably get mad at us, but uh, one, one of them was uh, Dick Gobber, <laughs> which <laughs> Tim forgot the L. It's supposed to be Dick Gobbler. <laughs> Other potential names were uh, boner boner liquor or boner taster <laughs> boner taster. <laughs> that was another title, um, and I can't remember the other ones. But uh, Dick Gobbler and boner taster was pretty tight, <laughs> and they all were no, it was ass liquor. Ass liquor. <laughs> And I think they were all on Nick's team. <laughs> yeah, they were on Nick's Nick's team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we're all to get it together and play Worms again. That was hella fun. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a pretty fun multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. We need to work on some of those settings, though. <laughs> yeah, then, you know, we gotta figure that game out. I was uh, one inch away from losing, and <laughs> Nick uh, got the charging buffalo and set it off, and it missed me because we never used it. He didn't know he wanted to do, like, a suicide. But uh, his worm on the bottom drowned from sudden death, and then I just, I think I did dynamite or something and won, barely. Yeah. And then I think um, on the first round, Tim or Nick won, I can't remember, yeah, but I lost. Won. We need to play that game a little more. I've only basically only played it a couple more times other than when Nick was there, but I think it's one of those games where you have to play through like story mode to get all the weapons. I see. Like, Super Smash Brothers Ball, where you gotta play through the story mode to get all the characters. Yeah. It just fucking sucks. It's like, I don't play fucking story mode yeah. in a fighting game. You know, but I, you know, I haven't played it enough to even see if that's true, but, you know, because that's something you play with other people, so I don't, I'm fucking, well, I'm not myself, I'm playing with fucking Killer Instinct. Yeah. yeah. Then Nick comes over, he's like, let's play with those worms. Yeah. Like, hey, I should have fucking checked this shit out before you <laughs> came over. <laughs> let's get Dick Gobbler out. <laughs> 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 what is cool though about the Xbox is you have the you got the Microsoft app on your phone. So when I'm typing in fucking Dick Gobbler and shit and ass liquor, you can do it on your phone, the keyboard on your phone, and not fucking oh, that's get cool. with your controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just syncs up with the system. It's pretty wow. cool. That is pretty cool. That's a fucking big help. That sucked on like Nintendo and shit. Fucking go in and fucking take an hour to type in yeah. your names on your role playing game <laughs> or your like baseball game or some shit. Mm -hmm. I think fucking that game you guys liked so much was that the baseball game was it Mutant? Mutant? Baseball like, Stars. Like what, what, what was the one? With the... No, I think I used to play Base Wars. It was the NES game I used to play with, with baseball. That's where you're at Cyborgs. Yeah. You can name your characters. That's and shit. right. Yeah. You can, like upgrade your players and shit. That's heck of tight. I, yeah. I played a little bit of that. I have that game. So, top five? Yeah. Um... Okay, top five, Nick. Wanted to give this an introduction here? Yeah, so our, our top five this week on this 66th episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia is inspired by the Pittsburgh Penguins' great Mario Lemieux, as uh, Brandon had mentioned earlier. Uh, Mario Lemieux donned the number 66 throughout his entire career. He chose to wear the number 66 because it was 99 upside down. I, I like to say that he was mocking Wayne Gretzky, but... Uh, he won Stanley Cup championships in 91 and 92, and most importantly, defeated Hodgkin's disease in 1993. Uh, due to injuries, he retired in 97, and then he uh, saved the Pittsburgh Penguins from leaving Pittsburgh by purchasing the team in 99. And after uh, watching the team and how shitty they were, he actually came out of retirement in the, the year 2000. It's fucking he, Michael Jordan. Yeah, shit. he was. He was, an owner, he was a player owner. He played until 2006, uh, and he passed the uh, the leadership torch to the current Penguins captain, Sidney Crosby. Uh, he continues to own the team, and he is an inspiration to victims of cancer worldwide. So that's why this week's top five is movies with at least one hockey scene. Tight. So let's roll to see who gets to start out. <clears throat> Tim gets 17. Out of 100 or what? 20. Okay, all right, that's fucked up. I get four. <laughs> Brandon gets 16, and Nick gets 20. He got oh, the nuts. Oh, man. So, 
my number five. I feel bad about making this my number five. It's going to be Slap Shot. 1977 movie. Paul Newman is a player coach for the Charleston Ch- Charlestown Chiefs. Uh, the team's going under, so the team decides to resort to violent play to gain popularity in this factory town of Charlestown. Uh, the real stars of the film are the infamous Hanson brothers, who don't seem to live for anything but fighting. All they do is fight the entire movie. It's so tight. Is and this based on the the? Is it a biography on the Hansons? On the ha- the the music group. Yeah, yeah. This, this is where they. And got it's their called Slap Shot. Yeah. What year? Back in 1977, before they oh. were born. <laughs> 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 I, didn't, I didn't catch the year. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, most most movie critics would probably make this, you know, one or two if there was ever a list like this composed. So it's kind of disrespectful to make it number five, but I did at least put it on my list. So that's my number five is Slap Shot. Are we going to run in clockwise? Yeah. Or? Okay. Sure. Mine is from 1987. <laughs> a wrongly convicted man must try to survive a public execution gauntlet staged as a game show. I'm sure if I think Brandon was saying he has this too if you want to jump in. <laughs> it's my number but, one. Uh, <laughs> it was released November 13th, 1987 in the U.S. In Japan, it was released December, <laughs> December 12th, 1987 under the name The Battle Runner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's fucking, it's, it's, what I love about this movie is all the sweet quips, you know, from Arnold from the cheesy 80s shit, you know, about calling him Plane Zero. And then later in the movie, he asked about Sub-Zero. He said he was a pain in the neck because he, he decapitated them with barbed wire. <laughs> so tight. <laughs> it's one of those movies that's it's ridiculous, but it's, it's fun to watch, you know. And technically, Sub Zero is a hockey player. You know, he's um has a hockey arena where he'll, you know chop people up with all with his hockey stick and whatnot. I really do love that movie. Huh? Yeah, I love that movie. I think it would be awesome if they did like a prequel and they just showed everybody dying like at the hands of everyone, not like Arnold coming in and killing him. But yeah, he kills they... all of them. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just like how people. They would actually start in Sub Zeros and how he'd kill them. I just thought that would be pretty cool to watch. That's the movie that's due for a remake. That was a sweet movie. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. With Arnold in it. And as Jesse a... Ventura. He had to come out of retirement <laughs> as, like, the Patriot guy. <laughs> what was his name in the movie? Do you guys remember? Uh, Ventura? Yeah. I... Captain Awesome? It was something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> that was awesome, though. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And then there was Dynamo, the uh, opera singer with really? the light. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you want to uh, say? Do you want to talk more about it now, or I'll wait. Yeah, go ahead. I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. Uh, number five on my list is going to be Mallrats. Uh, Brody is seen to what looks like playing a Sega Genesis game, uh, which was supposed to be NHL '94, but Kevin Smith actually came back and said it wasn't NHL '94; that he was playing NHL All Stars for Sega Saturn. Yeah, okay. says he couldn't get the rights. To that yeah. So um, that movie's just hilarious. Uh, it has that one little hockey hockey scene in it where they're playing the Genesis game, but nothing. You guys know how awesome Mall Rats is, but it is my number five because yeah. it's such a sh- short scene. I remember Justin introduced me to that movie, and Kevin Smith in my high school was like this. A fucking sweet movie right yeah. here. Uh-huh. Ken, Ken Chaney introduced me to Kevin Smith, and I just thought it was the best thing he ever done for me. <laughs> <laughs> After Over Battle, of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> Number five on my list is another Kevin Smith movie, Zack and Mary Make a Porno. Uh, there's a scene where there's a local hockey team called the Monroeville Zombies, named after the Monroeville Mall, which Dawn of the Dead takes place in. And who's the goalie of that team? Jeff Anderson, <laughs> Randall Graves. He has a sick uh, hockey mask, which uh, is all bloody and everything. And that's why it's my number five. My number four is a Jean-Claude Van Damme flick. 1995, Sudden Death. Yes. Jean-Claude Van Damme plays a fire marshal for the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, home of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and also known as the Igloo. Van Damme's attending Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals when he discovers that a terrorist played by Powers Booth is holding the Vice President hostage in a luxury suite. At one point during the film, Van Damme is running from the bad guys 
and he dresses up as a as the goalie for the Penguins to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this movie. <laughs> he actually gets in the game and he blocks a shot while, oh, while he's playing goalie for the Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be your number two. <laughs> So I couldn't keep it off my list. That's my number four, Sudden Death. <laughs> Isn't that what they call when a, in the finals of a hockey championship, when it's tied, they go into Sudden Death? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's called that because it, there's like a bomb threat, yeah. and he has to send the game into overtime in order to extend. Oh, the, oh, the puck is the bomb. What's that? The puck is a bomb? No, oh, I think oh, when the, the timer runs out, the bomb's going to go off. Yeah, that's what it was. When the game is over, that's when the, the bomb is supposed yeah. to blow up the entire arena. Oh, man. I think that's what they were negotiating. Like, you you pay me and I won't blow up this building. So was the happens, puck so. like a remote? Like a remote detonator? What makes you think I that? I think it was set up to the timer of the game. <laughs> like, think old school bombs with the timer on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you wrapped up with that? Yeah. I'll go and jump in. I had Sudden Death on here, too. Nice. From 1995. I put the... I was. I would look on Google Translator for... See which had the most ridiculous translation. <laughs> in French, it's... Suspense en prolongation. <laughs> Thriller in overtime. <laughs> Thriller in overtime. <laughs> and, you know, I just... I saw this Van Damme movie when it came out in 1995, so... I don't remember a whole lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming Van Damme does the splits. <laughs> I'm assuming someone gets a nut tap. <laughs> oh, yeah. He does like the punch guys and the nards. <laughs> the only uh, thing that I really remember is that he dressed up as the Penguin's goal and he just yeah. blocked a shot. I'm sure. I'm sure for some reason he had to lose his shirt at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I was all shaved and greased up. <laughs> and he did a roundhouse kick, a jumping roundhouse. <laughs> While on uh, skates. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been silly if he was wearing skates and he yeah. fucking like. Decapitated. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys that, you guys seen that clip online where the fucking person does that where he kicks the guy in the neck and fucking hits the oh, 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 You guys see that? That's a, it's from a real hockey match where a guy is like. He he like goes up against the wall and escapes and he gets <laughs> head over heels and he fucking hits a dude in the jugular. He on ice. cut his head off though. No, he gets his jugular. <laughs> but fucking I've seen that, yeah. yeah, fucking the heads aren't rolling. But. <laughs> That's what the head is like. Heck of Anyway, the best part of this movie is Powers Booth yes. because Cy Tolliver and Deadwood. Fuck yeah, which is one of my favorite shows ever. For sure. So now every movie Powers Booth is fucking sweet, yep. even if it sucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like my nineteenth favorite power, uh, fucking Van Damme movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not top ten like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I go ahead and you can go. Okay. Um, number four is going to be Dogma. This this has the Stygian triplets in it, the three ghoul hockey players. Dogma is an awesome movie. Don't have to say much more about that. Number four on my list. Let me guess, a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> is there a Kevin Smith movie that doesn't have a hockey scene? Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Is that any, are you sure? <sighs> I don't know. It's been a while. Do you want yeah. to like about that movie? There's no titties in that movie, huh? There's not. That's fucking bullshit. Unless you count the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, she would Elizabeth you... shows her titties in American Pie, too. But I'm not, yeah. I think she'd be down to show her titties. She became uh, snooty, and she won't do nude scenes after uh, that. That's dumb. Nice. Well, what else is she good for? <laughs> <laughs> she dropped her accent, too. <laughs> <laughs> her accent. <laughs> uh, number four for me is the Mighty Ducks trilogy. In the UK, South Africa, and Australia, did you know that the film was retitled Champions? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a spoiler, but... I'm stealing my gimmick over there. <laughs> uh, but in the UK, for home releases for VHS and DVD, it was changed to The Mighty Ducks Are the Champions. <laughs> <laughs> The film grossed fifty million dollars domestically in the U.S. Uh, and was, and this is why I made it my number four is because all that success led it to the Mighty Ducks cartoon TV show. That's um, I have to the pronunciation of this word anthropomorphic ducks. Anthropomorphic, yes. Uh, basically, it's alien ducks who play hockey, and people are as confusing them like. 
oh man, that's some pretty cool costumes, but it's actual ducks from outer space playing hockey. <laughs> and that's why the Mighty Ducks made my list. That Maybe that's why everybody in Europe's so depressed, all their movies get spoiled. Maybe. <laughs> Wasn't uh, The Sixth Sense changed to He's Dead at the End? <laughs> <laughs> Or he's dead from the beginning. <laughs> I uh, Mighty Ducks was number three on my list. Uh, I just put two words, Emilio Estevez. That's true. I, I, I also have Mighty Ducks as my number three, and I had two words, Flying V. Oh, man. That's the formation. Remember that one power hitter guy? Yeah. yeah. And, and then he like he put his hockey stick up in the air. And then was like, no. And then he went and had a soft. I don't have Mighty Ducks on my list because I didn't want to put any movies that actually have hockey going on. <laughs> I have respect for myself. <laughs> I don't know why, but I didn't want real hockey. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Hockey's tight. I'm not Pursuit. saying it's not tight. It's, it's a sweet game, but... I guess I just want to be an asshole about this list. Yeah, you're good at that. <laughs> I, I, I'll stand behind hockey. It's cool. I wish I could watch more of it. I wish we could play more when I was a kid, but around here, it's not, you know, it's really not it's so much of an option. You know, you can play football, you can play soccer, but there aren't a whole lot of ice to skate on around here. Nope. I tried. It's fucking expensive. It's too expensive. We're, we're all fucking poor. We can fucking play <laughs> hockey. Yeah, you gotta be rich to play hockey yeah. around here, that's for sure. There's like one place, and it's, you know, everybody gets to play in the one arena. Yep. Um, that's all I had to say about my number three. It's Flying V. Okay, well, um, I had Mallrats, 1995. You know, Sega Saturn game, I have that. It, it was titled, in Portugal, Os Malucos do Centro. <laughs> <laughs> the Freak Center. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> the Freak Center. <laughs> but, They're... Taking that one scene where in the they're in the dirty mall, I guess. Or maybe what they're doing is like, oh, this is a a movie about a human rat starter in a mall. That's freaky, <laughs> just from the title. Yeah, that's a most stretch. most of the countries it was like translated to like the loafers or like people the wanderers or just the people who wander around. Jeez. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, it's, it's it's one of my favorites. I I love mall rats. I love how he chooses video games over his girlfriend. Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> First priority. <laughs> And then he farts in her face while she's giving him head. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Elizabeth is a goblin now. Have you guys seen her lately? Not Shannon Elizabeth, but Shannon Doherty. Uh uh Shannon Doherty. Yeah, her teeth are like crazy. I never thought she was, I mean, she was attractive, but in that movie, you mean, someone could have made the case for her. But yeah. You can't stand behind her now. Crack is whack. <laughs> Crack is whack. <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw Kevin Smith never worked with her again. Yeah. <laughs> she must be a bitch. Wasn't it fucking um, the other Joey Lauren Adams in that movie? You guys know Kevin Smith was banging her at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard yeah. about that, yeah. Yeah, because he, he talks about that. It's like, she showed her boobs. That's like one of his main achievements he's always talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cheap version of Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, that's true. It was big. Jennifer, Jennifer Tilly is a very bosomy. I know. Joey like Lauren it. Adams is not. I know. I know, that's why she's I, cheap. <laughs> <Just cheating>. <laughs> <laughs> Women are measured by the size of their breasts. <laughs> and the annoying voice. They both have the same annoying voice. Yeah. Alright, let's take a poll. We got Jennifer Tiller, Jimmy Lauren Adams. From uh, the 90s, not now. Tilly. Tilly. Tilly, of course. Mm. She was in Chucky, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever see that one, the. Um... The Wachowski Brothers movie was that one where she's fucking lesing out with Gina Gershon. Uh, Bound. Not, Bound, yeah. Uh, yeah. I never even heard of that. I watched that recently. That's a cool movie. Because I, I like the Wachowski Brothers. They take a lot of shit lately. But I fucking lo I like that movie and I watched I watched Cloud Atlas. That's a fucking sweet movie. Everyone talks shit about it. but Cloud Atlas? Cloud Atlas. Atlas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so, I haven't seen that. That's a Wachowski Brothers movie, too. Mm -hmm. I fucking like all their movies. They do the uh, Matrix, right? Yeah. people. Well, they're the Wachowski siblings now. Oh, there's a. Did a girl enter the mix? No. One uh, fucking a vagina entered the mix. Fucking one of them cut it in half and tucked it in. Oh, are you serious? They had a. One of them had a sex change? That's oh, crazy. I didn't know that. So they're the Wachowski siblings now. I bet you the ugly one did it too. I think somebody just went from like Larry to Lana. <laughs> <laughs> Lana. <laughs> you guys should fucking look into that. It's oh, pretty, they yeah. got. Huh. It's done wonders for their career. Any uh, naked pictures? Online. Oh, the fucking Larry Wachowski. There's <laughs> <laughs> in that iCloud leak. <laughs> yeah. Bound by still thing. I like Joanna Lauren Adams in the 90s. She was pretty cute. Honestly, you're up, Brad. We are number three. Three? three? Should be on three. 
This is going to be my last Kevin Smith movie on the list. <laughs> Clerks. Field Hockey on the Roof. Introduction of Jane Silent Bob and Kevin Fitz Smith's first movie. Doesn't get much nostalgic than that. Nah, that was my number three as well. No, my number three was <laughs> The Mighty Ducks. You would... My number two, <laughs> my number two is Clerks. Spoiler. Aw, shit. <laughs> so, Clerks. Uh, I think he jumped in with someone else at some point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I basically have what you said, the uh, angry hockey guy. That's his name, angry hockey playing guy. <laughs> Scott Moser. Yeah, Scott Moser pops up in there, yeah. Uh, faces off against Dante, who gets rocked by him, and then he slaps the... <laughs> Uh, only ball they have into the gutter, and that ends the game after 12 minutes. Fucker. <laughs> you have clerks too? Nope. I do not have clerks on my list. Just... My number two is a 1992 flick called The Cutting Edge. Pretty much just because Moira Kelly's hot. I think she was one of the first women who I rubbed one out to. <laughs> <laughs> really, she's not that hot, but she's very pretty. She's really sassy in this movie. It's a cheesy romantic movie about a hockey player played by D.B. Sweeney who suffers a career-ending hockey injury. Maura Kelly is a figure skater who is looking for a partner, and Sweeney agrees to learn to, to figure skate just so that he can team up and get a shot at an Olympic gold. A shot at that badge is what he wanted. He got that. <laughs> this movie's number two for me because Maura Kelly taught me about masturbation. <laughs> and when they successfully pull off the Panchenko twist and win gold, so inspiring. That's my number two, The Cutting Edge. I'm sure that's all your guys' number one, right? Uh, which movie did you use? The Lion King? The Lion King? What are you talking about? Because she was in The Lion King. You were going out to The Lion King? No, in this this movie, The Cutting Edge. Oh, in that movie? Yeah, oh, she looked really good yeah, in this the, movie. I don't think that movie's too sensual. It's not, but I was just at an age oh, where man, I was... You were hard up for that age, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I was, I was probably like 11 or 12 when I first saw it. Fucking eleven or twelve, you can get your hands on some fucking fucking tidbit. Oh, you meant I thought you were implying that I was too young to be jerking it. No, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just saw this woman and she I did it for I think me. I thought I died. I had movies of my own. The fucking titties. <laughs> Dude, I fucking at least had fucking. Why would Bruce... I need that when I got more Kelly? Uh, I fucking Bruce Lee movies with fucking bitches tripping and shit, <laughs> fucking with their titties shaking. <laughs> yeah, but like I could watch this with my family and have these. Hey, was there you fucking with the covers on your lap? <laughs> of course, I was there <laughs> while I was there. Yeah, the covers in your I lap. I didn't mean to imply that. <laughs> Pulling at Jason Johnson. <laughs> Jason and Jeremy. Jeremy, get the blanket. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go. I'm doing a crazy order you now. I'm going to go with from 1998. In Brazil, this movie was titled Sim Trapaca, now Tim Gracia. <laughs> no Trickery Has Grace. Any guess on what that would be? No Trickery Has Grace. 1998 is the movie we've all seen. It is a fucking, what's, Trey Parker movie? Trey basketball? Parker? Yeah, basketball. <laughs> wow. In two seconds, there is, you see a guy in hockey get decapitated. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the beginning when they're doing the montage about how sports got all fucked up, <laughs> and they have the you know they have the the inner sports play and the football guys doing their little Irish jig, it shows a hockey scene where there's a fight and one guy gets decap decapitated. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a sweet movie. Love Trey Parker. Yeah, uh -huh. saw this movie with Justin. Fucking, I don't know. I I, I like all their movies. Like, is there any other movies you don't like? Some people don't like. Some people don't... or guys know or whatever. Oh, cool. a, you I, guess I, I, I like, like it. it. I'm just saying because I can understand why people would like it. I liked it. Yeah, I fucking. Uh, I, I mean, basketball. I think is the most dated of all their movies, though. With the, especially with the ska music and whatnot, that kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping your cause. But, like, <laughs> um, but it's it's a pretty sweet movie, and technically, it does have hockey in it. <laughs> I had to I had to on my DVD last night to make sure. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I gotta pick a movie that has the least amount of hockey possible. I'm pretty sure this movie has a hockey scene in it. Two seconds. I popped in a DVD and was watching with Ariel. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, there's a head. <laughs> it reminds me of Blades of Glory with uh, Will Ferrell and John Heater. Yeah. Wait, 
the move that they try to pull off is like can decapitate someone. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they have like a water uh, yeah. blown up. <laughs> like just gonna fucking cut off. Yeah. 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 My number two was clerks. Uh my number two is Miracle. The movie chronicles the journey of the nineteen eighty US Olympics hockey ice hockey team. Uh, Kurt Russell comes in and basically refurbishes the whole team. He's like, you guys don't know what you guys are doing or what you're up against because they're going against the Soviets, who's powerful. We know from was last podcast how much you guys all love the Soviets. <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir Putin. You guys are all fucking bubbling out in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have your fucking blanket under the table here. <laughs> the reason I like this movie is because it's, it's like the Rocky Four of the 2000s. Not giving away the ending... <laughs> it's pretty miraculous. <laughs> Decapitation. <laughs> Maybe. Fucking Van Damme comes in and saves the goal. Yeah. <laughs> He's been the goalie the whole time, the mass goalie. <laughs> My number one is a comedy released in 1996. Adam Sandler's last great film, Happy Gilmore. So many memorable and funny scenes. Adam Sandler plays Happy Gilmore, a shitty hockey player who comes to find that he can drive the ball far, a golf ball farther than any golfer in history. His rugged, hockey mentality doesn't mesh with the personalities in the golf world. Chubbs, played by Carl Weathers of Rocky fame, we were just talking about Rocky, not only teaches Happy to putt, but also helps Happy with finding his happy place to calm down. No matter how many shitty movies that Adam Sandler creates, he can be forgiven because of how great this movie is. And that's why this is my number one. So you didn't like Little Nicky? <laughs> I really like that movie. I was just wondering. He had some decent movies after that. Okay, this but not the great. Last great. Oh, okay. Movie. All right, I could I could agree with that. And some of his like less comical movies were actually pretty good. Why? Is, why would you see that? What do you mean? Why would you see movies with him that are not comedies? Why would you see his movies anyway in the last twenty years? Didn't you? I, I thought you were the one that said that you liked Spanglish. That was me. I like Spanglish. I have not seen Spanglish. So yeah, let the record like show it. Tim Wilson has not seen Spanglish. <laughs> Wasn't that, there was another one that was kind of like Spanglish too that I thought was all right. Too. The one with like, Seth Rogen where uh, Adam Sandler. Funny people. Yeah, that one. I really like that one. And it, wasn't it Punch Drunk Love or something like that? He had that movie. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was in the mid-90s though. That was way back then. So, And that's not his it movie. clearly after How to Gilmore though. Yes, but that's clearly not his movie. I didn't say. It. You know what movie Hecka sucks? Yes, I'm saying I have not seen the one in like the last 20 years. That movie is like 19 years old. Well, his sorry yeah, movie is uh, 50 First Dates. I hate that movie. I've never even seen that one. And um, Grown Ups. The yeah. second Grown Ups I enjoyed more than Grown Ups Part 1. But I hated Grown Ups. My turn? Yep. Yep. Alright, my movies from 2003 in Vietnam is translates to Dong Song Ki <laughs> Bai <laughs> State Secret River. Won two Academy Awards, so it's fucking sweet. It was nominated for Best Picture, but it didn't win. Tim Robbins won an Academy Award, Sean Penn won an Academy Award. <laughs> Mystic River? <laughs> fucking Mystic River. Yeah, hell yeah. The fucking, it's a cool movie. I, I read the book, I like the book better. But, I don't know, I don't know if you guys want me to spoil it, but. I, have, I haven't seen it. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. What has to do with hockey? Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, bitch gets killed with hockey club. <laughs> <laughs> hockey club? Oh, well, fuck, fuck this. Hockey stick. She gets clubbed with the hockey stick. <laughs> she gets killed and with the hockey stick. There's a little, um, little brother who's. I, I don't want to say he he's de- is developmentally challenged in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he has know. Down syndrome. I don't know something, that, but yeah, he's the, he's the, he's the killer, and he kills her with the with the hockey apparatus. <laughs> Stick is fine. <laughs> also, at the beginning of the movie, before Tim Robbins gets whisked away to his little four day rape escapade, oh, they're yeah. playing street hockey. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let Nick loves movies of male rape. Yeah. <laughs> Vulgar. Did have, you, have you seen Vulgar? I wish I didn't see it. <laughs> I wish I didn't see I it. <laughs> that movie fucking raped my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I didn't see it. Have you seen that, Nick? I have. I, I guess Why? I must have blocked it from my Why mind. have we all seen this shitty movie? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't Kevin Smith like have a he, role in it? Yeah. Like he produced it or something? Brian uh, Johnson made it. Oh, God okay. damn that movie! It's not don't don't watch it. Everyone out there, don't watch that movie. <laughs> like not like it's scary. It's it's not. 
it's disturbing. Not it's not good for you. <laughs> it's got clowns and ass raping in it. <laughs> oh, that might someone from our tar- target audience might like that. <laughs> uh, <Matty> G. <laughs> <laughs> Number one on my list is going to have to be Happy Gilmore as well. Uh, my favorite part in the whole movie is the the construction worker boss who gets hit in the head with the nail gun. Jaws. And, and oh, did you guys know that he died last yeah. week? I met him once in the state fair. In the state fair <laughs> I met too. That's like a tight. Yeah. So what was your favorite part? Sorry. When he's sitting there and he's wearing a shirt supporting Happy that says, Guns don't kill people, I kill people. <laughs> and he's running after Shooter at the end. <laughs> hella funny. My favorite part is how he runs hella funny. Yeah. yeah he's like... He's like you know, super like, overgrown guy like Andre the Giant. You can't fucking run. <laughs> it's probably like how... pumping his arms like over his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably how uh, Brian runs. <laughs> <laughs> or the great colleague. Um, I always laugh about a certain Melissa Kemp's running style in high school. Because she would run and her arms would be flailing around in random directions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know about that, Nick, but that's what you see go down. Okay. Yeah. I stand behind that. I believe you. She doesn't <laughs> run kind of good fully. That's why knees all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them. Uh, fucking throws off your balance and fucking fuck up your <laughs> whatever. She fucked up in their ASL. What is it? Uh, something like that. <laughs> what is the what is the new thing? ACL. ACL. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking throwing your arms wildly in all directions will throw off your balance and make things askew in your knee area. Tim just. <laughs> I'm talking about my wife. <laughs> she was formerly Melissa Kemp. So I not know. You done? Yep. So this movie probably wouldn't make a lot of people's lists. Apparently, it made another one, The Running Man, it's set in a dystopian America between 2017 and 2019. The hockey scene features Sub Zero. <laughs> Uh, he's dressed in armored hockey uniform and has a deadly bladed hockey bat. He's also on ice skates. After Arnold kills him with barbed wire, he quips, Killian, here's your sub-zero. Now you're playing zero. <laughs> Tim's quote. <laughs> Let's see you do your Arnold impression now. I can't. I can't do accents. Maybe like, Killian! <laughs> <laughs> I like how they always play it off like he's American and all <laughs> Like, we were watching T2 last night with my daughter. I was watching T2 because I'm like, there's a fucking arcade scene. I bet you someone's fucking playing air hockey in the background. <laughs> so I was watching it. My daughter was like, what is this? <laughs> so we watched half of it. But why is the fucking robot from LA fucking have <laughs> Austrian accent? I never explained that. I think uh, there's a air hockey scene in Tur- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I was th- thinking of the first Ninja Turtles because it's fucking Casey Jones fucking. Yeah. Yeah. In the first movie. <laughs> but I couldn't think of any air hockey movies. I tried. I watched a few movies last night that didn't fucking pan out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fast forward? You might have missed it. <laughs> has, has anyone seen Goon? I, I saw a little bit of it. I wanted to see it with Sean William Scott. Yeah, it actually looked, got some pretty good reviews. I haven't seen it. It was on Netflix. I watched a little bit of it, and it's pretty, I don't know, it's pretty good. It's just not holding my attention. Huh. I have one dishonorable mention that Brandon <laughs> might have. Uh, MVP, Most Valuable Primate. No. <laughs> Is that one of those Matthew Perry movies? No, it's the one with the monkey in it. I know, but the uh, actor who's in there is oh, the guy from Friends or whatever. The guy that Matt LeBlanc? Is that who it is? I think it's Matt LeBlanc, yeah. yeah. Is Matthew Perry Chandler? Yeah. Okay, I've got the Matthews mixed up. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that movie. I didn't even watch that movie, and I know it sucks. I was just, <laughs> you know, uh, Kevin Nash was on Stone Cold's podcast, and he was talking about being in Magic Mike Part Two, mm-hmm. and I thought it was Magic Mike, like when John the Jonathan Lipnicki movie, when he gets the magical shoes and becomes a basketball player. <laughs> I thought they're making a part two, like, a part two, like fifteen years later. I guess he's all grown up now. <laughs> And then there, he's like, "Yeah, it's called Magic Mike XXL." I was like, "That's dumb. That doesn't fit the theme at all." <laughs> and then I saw a theme, a, a little blurb saying Channing Tatum and Magic Mike Two. I was like, "Oh, that was that stripper movie." I'm not like a damn robot after that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. Though. I don't know. Brad saw it. No, I didn't see it. Yet. Uh, 
He said, yeah. <laughs> I plan on Did it. Did you wait until your family's out of town? <laughs> He's waiting for it to be on Netflix. <laughs> We're going to watch it October 4th. <laughs> oh, in the cabin. <laughs> Need a big blanket for that one. <laughs> Just wait for Valentine's Day. Is he good? <laughs> Do a little fucking reenactment for Karen. Uh, cool picks? Yeah, cool picks. Unless bits. anyone had Fuck any. Yeah. <laughs> so, week four... Of the National Football League. <laughs> the Thursday game is the Packers against the Bears. Uh, since Favre's retirement last year, <laughs> they have picked up an extraordinary quarterback. Oh, it's Chicago, huh? Does, Jeffrey doesn't like Chicago? Or Sh- J- Jeffrey likes Chicago. Okay, so the Packers win. <laughs> did you guys see Favre's dick pick? No. no. Oh, wait, yeah, I think I did, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't see that shit. <laughs> Wasn't he like wearing a helmet? Like he was trying to play it off. Like he was like wearing a helmet. Like you don't know who I am. I got my dick out. <laughs> That's funny. I don't I'm not that. I, I, I haven't seen. I'm not the authority on Farmer's penis. I'm not either. Apparently, you know more about it than I do. You know, you've seen the picture. I have seen the picture because I wanted to see like if it was actually him. All right, really his quick pick. <laughs> You're the one that said. <laughs> I, uh, Titans against the Colts. You know, when I do these cool picks, sometimes I like to take things literally. <laughs> We're going to break this down. On one hand, you have a Colt. Do you know what Wikipedia says about Colts? It's a fucking dude horse. It, it is a male horse, but it's less than four years of age. But it has to be greater than one year. So between one and four. Like I've been all wrong about Colts my entire life. <laughs> Me too. I don't, know why I don't know what to believe anymore. But we're not going to confuse Colts with a yearling, which is between the ages of zero and one. <laughs> Colts are often driven from their herd into the wild because they don't want interbreeding or uh, incest. So why who? Who are they driven by? The the adult stallions and oh, the wow. mares. They call the females a mare and a male a stallion. Uh huh. So a colt's a teenage horse. Kinda, yeah. Are there still horses in the wild? I'm sure there are. I, cause I was trying to think, like, where are there horses in the wild? Montana, I know, maybe. Maybe. I know of one place in a Rolling Stones album. <laughs> they have a. Uh, a song called Wild Horses. Wild Horses. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good song. <laughs> and that's why the Rolling Stones are so stupid. <laughs> have you, have you, look at their album names. Dirty Work, Between the Buttons. No, you love fucking Sticky Fingers. With sticky that fucking, Fingers. Where's fucking dick on display? Where's this fucking, where's this cock askew in his tight jeans? <laughs> and then you love it. And then uh, the the recently one is called a bigger bang. Like the, the innuendo is just off the hook on this. <laughs> I have an insight to what their next album is going to be called: "Dirty Old Perverts." <laughs> you think they're going to live that long? <laughs> <They're old shit>. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be f- fucking singing with the fucking tubes coming out of their nose with the oxygen. <laughs> He's going to be twirling around his oxygen tank. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just going with the Titans. <laughs> uh, Bills and the Texans. Buffaloes against Buffaloes. Uh, of course, one state is in New York. The Buffalo is in New York. But Texas is my second hated state out of the 50 we have. But it does have some redeeming qualities like Cowboys and the Broken Skull Ranch that Stone yes. Cold Steve Austin runs. So the <laughs> Texans get the, get my vote. Nice. Bucks and Steelers, another auto lose because the Steelers, Pittsburgh sucks. Uh, Except and, for the Penguins. Right, right. And they don't suck it right then. Sure. <laughs> so Tampa, that's in Florida, right? Tampa Bay? Yes. We learned that last season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Falcons and the Vikings. You know, when I do these cool picks, sometimes I like to take the actual state into play. <laughs> like I imagine what would happen if Atlanta and Minnesota got into a fight. Now, before you stop me, I know Atlanta <laughs> is a city, but, <laughs> but it's also a state, a state of mind. <laughs> when I think of Atlanta, I think of the Southeast. And what's Southeast synonymous with? Heat. 
scorching, unrelenting, terrible, awful heat. When I think of Atlanta, I think of old paintings of cities and towns ruined by a huge, stupid sun smack dab in the middle. <laughs> I mean, I know the sun gave Superman his towers. That's a bonus. But Superman isn't real. But the sun is. <laughs> so I'm going to the Vikings. Saints and Cowboys. Oh, man. Top two teams. You know, when I do these cool picks, sometimes I like to take the mascots into play. <laughs> I shouldn't have done it this time around. Do you know the Saints mascot? No, I don't. It's not a Saints? There's two. Gumbo the dog. Oh, it's hurt. That's stupid. Do you know why? Because <laughs> it's a Saint Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also Sir Saint who has the biggest butt chin I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if Jay's Leno chin and the great Khali's chin had sex and made a giant chin baby, and then the super giant chin baby was exposed to a super, ba super baby radiation cloud formed from uh, the Chernobyl explosion, the bomb dropped in Japan and Hiroshima, and the radiation from the nuclear fallout from the newest earthquake in Japan a few years ago and then all of that radiation jumped onto the baby chin <laughs> and then it got pumped up with all the steroids that Mark McGuire and Jason Giambi <laughs> supposedly didn't take <laughs> and then it got put onto Sir Saint then you have the chin on the Sir Saint mascot so I'm going for the Cowboys <laughs> Patriots and Chiefs you know when I do these cool picks <laughs> Sometimes I like to take history into play, Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers and the Ravens. You know when I do these cool picks. Sometimes I like to take the team's criminal record into history. <laughs> into play. And sometimes I put these criminal offenders in the in a WWE tag team match against each other. <laughs> In one corner, weighing in at 421 pounds, we have Greg Hardy and Ray Carruth, the Carolina convicts. <laughs> in the other corner, weighing in at a monstrous combined weight of 512 pounds, we have Ray Lewis and Ray Rice, the Baltimore Ray Rays. Fact, Greg, Hart, Greg Hardy and Ray Rice are suspected of domestic violence. Fact, Ray Lewis and Ray Carruth are suspected of murder. Fact, Ray Carruth was born in Sacramento and went to Valley High School. Fact, Ray Lewis evaded jail time, making the Ravens the winner. <laughs> Jets and Lions, Lions. <laughs> Dolphins and Raiders. You know, sometimes I like to take a team's, the team's fans into play. Fact, all Dolphins are smarter than Raiders fans. <laughs> Dolphins are pretty smart, so we're going with the Dolphins. Jaguars and Chargers. You know, sometimes I like to take the emblem of, on a team's helmet into play. <laughs> Both teams have equally awesome logos. The Jaguars have a Jaguar as their logo, and Chargers have a lightning bolt. But the Jaguars have, get a slight advantage because I like cats. Jaguars. <laughs> and the last game, Eagles and the Niners. You know, sometimes I like to take a team's portrayal in movies into play. <laughs> the Eagles have Invincible, which we learned from last season. While the 49ers had, there's something about Mary. Now, although something about Mary is pretty funny, it had one excruciating flaw. Cameron Diaz was in it. <laughs> and what did the Eagles have? Fuel it, fuel it, Marky Mark. So you know that fucking Marky Mark and Cameron Diaz? I'm not talking about sex, I'm talking about what movie I'd like better. <laughs> so, it was Eagles. I don't remember the first. Oh, like the whole team banger or something like that. When uh, yes, the whole team banger. <laughs> no, there was like three or four. Of no, them, she was saying they? that she didn't like Brett Favre because she's a Niners fan. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I thought there was a scene where like there. Were... Yeah, they pulled the train on her and fucking. Yeah. No, I know not that, but the, like there was a whole bunch of people who were like begging for her hand. I thought at one point like there was a team of players that were trying to get her to marry. Who's Brett Favre? Oh, okay. Kirk Patrick. <laughs> Cameron Diaz is still alright looking back then. I don't like her. I don't, I don't think you have a chance. <laughs> so, does anyone have a jerk of the week? I, I have, do not. I have a jerk of the week. You're up. 
You guys know who Aaron Gerwer is? I do. I do. <laughs> Long time friend of the podcast. He hosted once on episode 12. He's not my jerk of the week, but people like him are. <laughs> people who assume that everything is racism. I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist or that it isn't a problem. What I'm saying is that it's annoying to assume that everything that happens to a minority happens due to racism. Earlier this week, a black actress by the name of Danielle Watts was detained by L.A. police officers when she was uncooperative when the police were responding to a 911 call. I don't know what happened. It seems that different sources have different information. But to automatically assume that the cop was a racist and decided to interrogate and detain her based on the fact that she's black is not fair and very fucking annoying. So that's my jerk of the week. Anyone who assumes that everything is racism. It's funny because I saw when he posted that and said uh, people so quick to judge or assume or whatever. And then you came back with uh, the actual what happened. Like mm-hmm. she was actually having sex in her car or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, see, that's what happens when the media <laughs> doesn't do fact checking. Right. Also, oh. when people post Facebook <laughs> posts without fact checking, right. that's what happens. Uh, what, what is the issue here? She you wasn't fucking that bitch. She wasn't fucking that I don't know. You don't know that. I see pictures. You saw pictures of them yes, not the, fucking. Yes, the, the person, <laughs> the person who called in the, to the police department sent her pictures in. The pictures got online. So her most incriminating pictures were her just sitting on his lap with her fully clothed. I'm not saying that she did or didn't. I'm just saying it's bullshit to say he was responding to a 911 call. Someone I'm, called it in. I'm saying the person who called in probably thought she was a prostitute because she was black. Okay, but it's not fair to say that the cop thinks that she that is a racist for that reason. I'm not saying that either. Well, that's what exa- that's what people are implying. They're saying that the, that the cops pulled her over or arrested her based on the fact that they no, thought she was a no, prostitute, no. based on the fact that I, she's I, black. Th- I think she's pissed off that the cops came there at all because. But yeah. they have to respond to a call. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think the issue was the people who called in were racist. I don't disagree with that. I think if there was two white people fucking making out, they'd be jerking it and fucking <laughs> in the behind the curtains. <laughs> or they thought that was a lady of the night because she was. Yeah, you know, that's what they said. They thought she was. They, that's what they, I thought she was a prostitute. And she's like, I'm not a prostitute. This I'm not denying right. that. I'm saying it was. That's a, they were kind of using it as another example of what happened in Ferguson. Like the, this woman got arrested simply because she's black, and that's not true. No, she got arrested for being belligerent. Yeah. yeah you can't just not give her ID. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Remember when we were at Thai food? When uh, on Watt Avenue, that lady was running around topless, yeah, and they, the cops had to come out and <laughs> put her in the ambulance because she started faking a heart attack. Because <laughs> 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 she found out, because she was on drugs, obviously yeah. flashing everyone, uh, and the cops came out because uh, they like the boobs on there. Something about Mary. I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see it. I, I was. My back was to the window, and so the cops came, and then she was like, "You don't have guy radar, cause I have guy radar. When the fucking boob fall, falls away, where it fucking I saw it, it wasn't like, pretty. I see it was like a windy day, and I see it's a skirt. Fucking, I'm all over that. I have guy radar, when like, you know, when there's shit going around me, where a fucking badger or tit might pop out. Fucking, I'm all over that. You follow, it, even though it's not in your daily routine. I can feel, I get my spidey sense. I can feel it. I feel something about to happen. <laughs> That's how it does. <laughs> So this lady, uh, she was on drugs, and once she caught wind that she was in trouble with the cop, she started faking a heart attack to get an ambulance, so she would leave in an ambulance instead of a cop car. <laughs> You're assuming that she faked a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> racist. Like a racist. I might have a jerk of the week next week, depending on if some time gets approved or disapproved. Do you have a jerk of the week? <laughs> I, I have a jerk of the week. Who's that? I was... It's 6.30 p.m. last night. <laughs> I, well, I watered the front yard. I, was, I brought the backyard, and I was going to water the front, and there's a couple, maybe just one neighbor. He's an Asian guy across the street. He has his shirt off, and he has his garage door open. He's just hanging out. I'm like, yeah, fuck this guy. I'll just come back, like, in half hour when he, go, when he closes the garage door and goes back inside. And then, like, an hour later, there's two of them, you know, and, and then, you know, I'm like, God damn it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm like, oh, they can't be out there too much longer. And then, like, 10 o'clock rolled around. I was watching T2 with Ariel. I'm like, no, if I just go out there, it's, it's going to be weird if I'm out there watering the yard. It's, like, 1030. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, wait, how like how can be out there? Well, fucking, I started doing all my research. Luckily for you guys, they were out there until 2 a.m. So <laughs> I could do all this Google research and get funny translations for these movies. Otherwise, <laughs> I wouldn't have been up until 2 a.m. when these fuckers up. But 2 a.m., there was, they were all out there partying, all, all their whole family. It was not slowing down. I had to call it, but it's like, 
They just sat there with their grudge. They weren't playing games. They weren't making a podcast. They weren't doing anything. They're just, hey, man, we got the garage door open. A couple, we got our shirts off. We got some beers. Let's sit here so, and not let Tim water his yard. <laughs> so they were on water watch. <laughs> See, the thing is, I just done it at six thirty. I guess I'm the asshole. I should just done it at six thirty and not hate my neighbors. But they were just doing it because they would see me every twenty minutes, put my eyeballs out of the shutters, like, <laughs> like fuck that guy. We can wait him out. So, are you guys regulated, like, when you can or can't water your lawn? They're supposed uh, to be. They, they, they now they're just like making suggestions. They're not, you know, they have like rules like you can't just fucking water the sidewalk. Yeah. You don't have any any gallon restrictions or minute restrictions yet, but. I, I just have plants. I don't have any more grass. I just go out there and water it by hand, you know, every other day. It's know. funny because I saw no watering down sidewalks. Who does that? <laughs> people yeah. who have sprinklers. You're sprink- that's why I took my sprinklers out. Sprinklers just fucking water the sidewalks all the fucking time. And then people don't look at them or check them. And that's what they want to stop. People need yeah. to check their sprinklers. Because I just imagine like some old guy watering down his oh. concrete <laughs> so he could go get oh. his mail with his shoes off. I know a certain podcaster <laughs> who I go to his house and a sprinkler would be shooting water across his walk, <laughs> so- concrete walkway. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you going to fix that sprinkler? <laughs> like, you fucking hurt me. What's the problem? It's getting the grass wet. It's getting the water. <laughs> but it was traveling across the whole sidewalk, is all I'm saying. Nick Jones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fix that sprinkler? Yeah. No! <laughs> we gotta cut this out of the podcast and make us a lot of <laughs> Water down the sidewalk. What a lobber. <laughs> He's Dick Gobber. <laughs> Dick Gobber. <laughs> Alright, so that'll do it for episode 66 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Tim. Happy hunting. <laughs>